What's up, YouTube? Ricky T, CFGLA, your flamenco guitar coach. In this video, we're going to learn from Maestro Ruben Diaz, right? <clears throat> the founder of CFG. Uh, so we're going to watch a video where he speaks about good posture. Um, basically, the beginning steps to playing the guitar properly. It's just having good posture, right? Making sure that you prevent injuries, making sure that you make everything else easier for you. So you have bad, if you have bad posture, you're not going, you're going to, things are just going to be harder, All right? It's not saying that you can't do this, you can't do that. If you play the guitar different, you surely can do whatever you can do. But if you have good posture, it'll surely make things easier. All right, so uh, somewhere over here, you guys know how it is. Boom. Let's get started. With a great method and following Paco's advices that we have online, the difference between following one thing and following another is huge. Because on this method, you will, with the 20 minutes a day of practice, mm -hmm. proper practice, and taking care of the posture and that, because practically speaking, postural habits, and this is things that get you stuck later on. Some of these beginners videos, you know, I, I have never stopped to wonder how how they, they should cynically say, well, you know, technique doesn't matter, this doesn't matter, this other thing doesn't matter, <laughs> but at the end, it does matter, because how you hold the guitar is how you will enjoy it later yep. on. Music is a liberating experience. Yep. And the difference from this program, my coaching program in the Skype, I have this program that you can join, and this is for all levels, absolutely. And with that, you can see that in very short time, you cover so many areas, because I took out everything which is not necessary that I have to study in the school also. <laughs> but I, I get rid of that for you to simplify all things. And because of my success, my success is to make you play better mm -hmm. day by day. Yep. And I'm getting it every day too. So hopefully you will also join and see what it is. Because if you just do a test, test yourself for one month following these things and you will see what happens. Thank you, and i see you next time. Yeah, so this is not the whole video, but I mean, that's essentially what he's saying, right? Like, it's, it's posture. And this is actually how I started. I, I found Maestro on, uh, on YouTube, and I joined the Skype program. I, I joined the CFG family and started training. Training, training, training. Before, I was a classical musician. Now... I mean, I was in a classical musician, let's say, professionally. I just started the guitar by studying classical music in college. Uh, but I always liked, you know, flamenco music. I, I, I liked the, the Gypsy Kings, right? Um, that's that's kind of the flamenco that was in my area, Cupano Bajamin, um, the Gypsy Kings. But now, you know, I, I, I found Paco and I was just, whoa, blown away. And then I found somebody that teaches Paco. I said, wow, got to follow, right? So, uh, and this is how he started me, right? Bringing it back. This is how he started me with posture. I mean, I already had pretty good posture, but I was, I was playing the guitar classical style, right? With the pad right here and you're here on the guitar, right? You're doing all your things here. But, you know, Paco plays differently and that posture is good too. I still do this posture for scales. Right, this posture is good for scales, but in, in the flamenco world, or in the Paco de Lucia method, I don't want to say flamenco in general, but in the Paco de Lucia method, we, it's okay to, to, to take this classical posture when you're practicing scales. The other one here, this is, this is what we do for most everything, especially for thumb work, rasgueos, everything. This is only scales. So. And here is a video that a friend of mine suggested me to do. And this one for someone that plays not from the scratch, or not from zero, but minus zero, <laughs> like the cold in Canada, you know? So for those who have never taken a guitar in hand and from starting from real zero, what they do? Well, first of all, with the right hand, very simple thing. You just grab your guitar in a way that is horizontal. Then you avoid this thing, playing like this, or <laughs> actually you have it inside or perpendicular like this. Yeah. Right? And then once it's straight, then you want to do 
just one simple thing to play the second string with index middle, these two fingers, alternating. So we, we go rest this stroke important. like this. Coming from classical, I was doing, you know, the, um, not the rest strokes. I was doing the tirado, as I call it, where it's just not the rest strokes. So just that. Then you may try to do also later on three notes per string. still trained doing that right it's it's that is so helpful it is so helpful because in when you're doing picado which almost everyone loves picado what will hold you back is not being able to alternate fingers right they have two ways they have two you there are basically two options when you're when you're doing picado when you're going down the string and up the string if the reason why it says do three is because when you do three no matter which finger you start on, you're going to traverse all of them, on both of those options when you go down. So it has to say that if you start with your index and you go index, middle, index, when you go down to the next string, you're gonna have to go down on the middle. If you start on the middle, it's gonna be middle, index, middle, and then when you go to the next string, you're gonna go down on the index. You're gonna go to the, to the, end, to the next string on, on the index. And the same thing when you go up, that's why it's three. And that exercise helps you to be able to basically not care which finger you start on, right? It's gonna be, it's gonna, it's gonna allow you to go fast because you're gonna alternate. In Paco's method, we alternate fingers all the time for picado. We don't duplicate. We don't go one, 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 one. Like, -da. <laughs> we don't do this Captain Hook stuff. Uh, you know, no disrespect to anybody who does it. If you do it and it works for you. Kudos to you, because music is about you expressing yourself. But if you want to be technically sound per the Paco method, this is this is what you'll do. Like this, right? So you pick first just one string, the second string, then play just one note there, one note, single note, resting, rest the stroke, and then then we go into details with that, right? Then for the, for the left hand, same thing. One principle, very important principle, is that we don't have any tension here in the left hand, meaning yeah. special rules or put the, the thumb like that, nothing. Just grab the guitar naturally as your hand anatomy is. However, it's most and natural. then now, for instance, we put one chord, E minor, so we, we will call this finger one, two, three. However, it is most natural, but also, however, allows you to properly push on the string. Right. If you if, if you see, look at his fingers two and three. He's coming directly on the string, not like that on the string, like he like almost barring. He's on the string, on the string. So your thumb will have to be. It's gonna change depending on the chords you make. It's gonna be able to articulate. Right. It needs to be able to articulate. There's no rule in the Paco method to say just have your thumb like this and, and it's always like this. No. It needs to be dynamic. Or please don't call this one ring finger middle. This shows you that, that this guy, guy saying that shows he didn't went to the music school. In guitar, we don't call this one index. We call this one, two, three, four. So we have the strings, sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second, first. I don't know why, but in guitar, someone decided that this is the sixth. <laughs> well, it is the first one we see, right? So. Many people think that this is the sixth, the first string because it's logic, it makes sense. But instead, no, you know, guitar and, and woman is a bit difficult to understand, it's contradictory. So you need to see this one as the first string. So for chords, as I said, just very relax the hand, don't do weird things or try to follow any postures of, of the weird classic school. And 
just place finger two on the second fret, fifth string, and finger three on the second fret, fourth string. This is E minor. Right, then we have a chord of D, like this. So what he's doing now, E minor is the first minor. He's going E minor is the first minor, then he goes to D major over F sharp. That's this finger here to F sharp. D minor over uh, D major over F sharp. It's basically D major though. It's just it's just D major. Um, and then and then he's gonna go. So the cadence this is called por malagueña, right? Four chords. You have the E minor, that is the first minor. You have the D major as your flat seven. Then you have the C major as your flat six. Then you have the B seven flat nine, which he'll get to right now. We move one finger down and one up, and then finger four on the third fret, second string. F sharp is, is the third, right? right? So it's we'll have D major. An A minor like this. Finger four Beautiful on the A minor. Fifth fret. The reason why he's going to A minor instead of C major is because um, four minor, A minor that that's that's serving as the four minor. It's the four minor of the key. If the key were A minor, we were counting, the fifth is B. So what's the fourth? A. So A minor. Paco introduced this. Um, so this is this is amazing right here. It's actually a great sound. Two in the third fret, fifth string and finger. And then the way he's doing this chord here. One on the uh, second fret, fourth string. And then open, zero, zero, zero. This. And then we have the typical flamenco chord. <laughs> This here, which will be fingered one on the second fret, fifth string. We don't play the sixth, we play from the fifth down, like this. So we have finger one on the second fret, fifth string, finger three on the fourth fret, for the string, and finger four on the fifth fret, third string. So, like this. So we have E minor, D, A minor, and B7. So this is four, four things basic. With the left hand, very important is not to do things like trying to twist this or not go up or all this. We don't follow. This Paco said that we don't follow this. <laughs> so we will we'll play most naturally. And with the right hand, best idea you first. Well, generally people pick the first one. But I would prefer with the second one because you have two in between. That makes you have a bit better, the, the, the attack is here, this way. Just two fingers, and try to not do these things. Anyway, I will post in the description a nice video which has other 18 things to follow. There is a video which is 18 points on picado, and if you notice his thumb right there, he's not, he's not resting his thumb on the sixth string. Um, when we practice, we don't do that. In the Paco method. Yeah. But because to start from zero, only thing is that you don't get a wrong posture. Right? The problem with, 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 with things from the scratch is that, is that they tell you, oh, the technique doesn't matter, this doesn't matter, this doesn't matter, but at, at the end of the day it matters because, mm -hmm. <laughs> because you will not advance the same. So by simply keeping the guitar, not keep the guitar like this, having horizontal, then you are seated straight and place your hand like this and then that's all, natural. Just things natural. Other video useful I will post in the description is this, in which I show the guy who wants to talk. Because what will happen is if you don't have a comfortable or natural or ergonomic posture over time when it's when you have to actually practice and you sit down and you do your picado practice or you do your alzapua practice your technique practice or even just playing over extended periods of time you're going to get aches and pains in, in places and then you're going to stop playing and then you're going to be inclined to just stop playing this technique or stop practicing that's a very common loophole that, that I think we all have, 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 have been a victim of, right? So that's why posture is so important because, like I said, it'll help you to, to facilitate everything, to make everything easier. From Estonia, 
how you just, when you drop the hand on the table, this is the same thing we are doing here. Actually. So we go put the guitar like this, and then now, as if we are dropping the hand here, we do this, right? And then, so we play. The same way I play here, as I have little distance from the, this part of the wrist, and I'm making actually contact with the wood. This is the Paco's Post principle. Mm -hmm. this thing. So you can either practice it like this first, just with the, with the minimum, so we try to avoid this thing, and then with the minimum, right? And then you go like this. So not this, just put it straight, or in can be also. And then here we have with the right hand. There you go. This is really speaking the first thing a beginner should do. <laughs> so Paco said that, I pass you the tip. Thank you, and I see you next time. All right. There it is. So, you know, from the mouth of Maestro Ruben Diaz, uh, Don Maestro Ruben Diaz. No, but. Just, just to recap, posture is very important. It, 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 it helps you to make everything else easier. It helps you to avoid injuries. It, it, it helps you to play how you want to play, right? You might not want to play fast. You might want to play slow. That's fine, but it'll make everything easier, right? It'll make it so that when you, when you play that note, you can play that note effortlessly. And then you can focus more so on the sound and on the, whatever music you're producing with your instrument. This is this is posture for all instruments, right? If, if you think about piano players, right? They, they, that posture, the way that they smash down the keys and, and, and how they do it, that's extremely important. Same thing here with the guitar. So guys, hope you found this video helpful. Like, comment, subscribe below. Uh, and I'll see you next time.